So it appears that I have become that person. And when you haven't eaten sugar for two weeks, it tastes pretty good. Hi friends. Today's the day, I am so excited. I've teased this out a little bit, but we're just gonna dive right in. This is gonna be a two looks, one palette with the Vintage Rose palette from Gimme Glow Cosmetics. If you've been here for a while, you know that this is my white whale. <laughs> this has been a very coveted palette of mine for, I mean, I think I clocked this palette like maybe three years ago and I had it saved on my Instagram for that many years, I'm pretty sure. And if you know Gimme Glow, you know that they are always, always out of stock because they sell out like that whenever they restock anything. This is one of their like cult classic palettes and I can't believe it's here. I can't believe I'm holding it. So I think there's no need for any more preamble. Let's just get on into it. Two looks, one palette with the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Vintage Rose Palette. If that sounds like fun to you, then please keep on watching. And let's get started. So that's what we're fighting today, folks. It is a new audio battle every single episode. I think it's wild to see a palette hold relevancy for more than a year these days. So the fact that this palette remains coveted for many people and relevant for many people for this many years now is astounding. But for me, it's brand new. I've only dipped into a couple of shades on my last video. If you haven't seen that yet, I will link it up here. So this is going to be really fun and exciting for me and hopefully for you too, even though I'm sure you have seen many videos on this palette already. It is my personal favorite color combinations. We have these rich, dusty rose tones. We have a deep burgundy. We have a green, which you know is my favorite color. And these pff, ridiculous looking shimmers. Let's just swatch a couple right now off the bat. Thorn, which I cannot wait for. Copper rose, a bouquet, and blossom. This color palette carries me through every season, spring, summer, fall, winter. I just can't get enough of these colors. The reflective quality in Give Me Glow's metallics, their shimmers, they are so unbelievably beamy. For today's look, I really wanna keep it simple. I actually am seeing a friend in person this evening for patio drinks, but because I haven't seen this friend in like over a year, I definitely want to, you know, show up looking my absolute best. Of course, without looking like I'm trying too hard. It's the most horrible pressure sometimes when you are meeting up with a friend who you haven't seen in a while. You just want to look like the best version of yourself, but you don't want to look like you're trying to do that. I don't know if anyone else experiences that, but for me, sometimes meeting up with friends who you haven't seen in a while is very stressful. So the first look in this video is probably going to be a little more low key, but we'll definitely amp it up in the second look. So let's get some simple glam going. Why don't I zoom you in? Of course, seeing this palette makes me just want to play with everything all at once. And I can definitely see how these two quads kind of work. But part of me wants to see these two colors together. I know they don't really go, but seeing as this is the only transition in the palette that's light enough for my skin tone, I think that's what we're going to have to work with. Let's start things off with a little primer. So today we're trying to achieve a look that is very me, just very simple, a little bit of glam, but not going too overboard. First, let's tap into blush pink. I'm very curious to see how that looks with these more burnished bronzy tones. I don't know why I think it's going to look cute, but we'll give it a go. So let's tap into blush pink here. There's a very similar pink in the Vivid Rose palette, but I think this one is a little bit more pastel. So let's just give this a little dusting up in the outer third. Wow, this is a gorgeous pink. It's very light and airy. Let's blend this into the inner third as well because I have a feeling I'm gonna do a little cut crease today. Moving on, let's tap into Rust Rose, which I had a really good time with the other day, so. I'm gonna focus this on the inside of the crease first because I wanna see what happens if I throw in the darkest shade on the outer third. All right, let's tap into Velvet Petals. No patchiness so far. This formula really adheres to that primer quite well. And I'm starting to pull that 
darker color up and out with whatever product I have left on the brush. I'm actually really enjoying the blend between Velvet Petals, that dark burgundy, and blush pink. Back into Rust Rose for a half a second, just to emphasize it a little bit more. All right, let's go in with a little bit of glitter primer and cut ourselves a little crease. So I definitely want to keep the inner portion of the lid quite bright. So let's tap into blot. So let's tap in. So we're definitely going to use Blossom for that. Oh yeah. Let's go into a little bit of Copper Rose, but then I'll blend it into Bouquet on the edge. Oh, and it's everywhere. It is everywhere. Let's tap into Velvet Petals, which is that burgundy, and work that into the blend. Let's take a little bit more Rust Rose because I feel like we lost it a little bit once we cut the crease. These are the kind of shimmers that you have to blot out on your hand before you go in on your eye. The fallout is everywhere. There's no escaping it. Let's start with a little bit of blush pink on the lower lash line. And then I think the lower lash line is gonna be mostly Rust Rose just to tie that heat in a little bit more. And I think that's all I wanna do. I do not wanna overcomplicate this today. Why don't I go do this on the other side, throw on some lashes, and then come back and finish the rest of the look. Okay, other side is done, lashes are on. These are broken from Likely Makeup. I usually tack on just like a half lash and stack those a little bit, just because I feel like the broken lash just needs like a little bit more lift in the corners. Okay, let's move on to blush. And anyone who's watched this channel before could probably have predicted that I was going to just use this palette for blush and do a, just touch, just a, just a touch of draping. So let's go into blush pink. I mean, come on, it's called blush pink. What do you want from me? And let's start to build that up on the cheek. Oh yeah, that was definitely a good idea. I was thinking of deepening that up a little bit further, but I kind of just like it how it is, so I might just leave it there. I honestly have no idea what they're doing up there, but this noise has been going on for literal months. I don't know what project could possibly be taking them this long, but let's throw on a little bit of ambient blush. And I gotta use it again, cause listen, if I don't, I'm gonna go to jail. So let's grab a little bit of Star Surfer. Let me just throw this into the inner corner quickly because I don't have anything else going on in there. I'm just gonna tuck this into the waterline. This is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the color Strawberry Milk. Um, lips? I don't know. Let's do a little bit of liner first. And I think I just wanna go with something really simple like a gloss, just cause I'm gonna have to wipe it off before I put on my mask anyway. So I don't really feel like fussing with a lipstick. But let's just go in with Patrick Ta. Okay, I think we're done. All right, I believe that is look number one, all done. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's nothing revolutionary with me, I mean, but I think it's gonna be great for a night on the patio. So far, really loving it, even though, listen, I'm covered in glitter. <laughs> 
<laughs> these shimmers are crazy messy, like wildly messy. Even with a glitter primer, they get everywhere all over the face. Like I'm covered in it across my cheeks, which is not a deal breaker for me. It's something that I can live with. But if that is a deal breaker for you, then I would stay far, far away from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I'm really impressed with Velvet Petals, that deep burgundy shade. No patching or balding happening, especially on the outer corner where I have a lot of trouble with that. And the shades so far packing on top of each other really nicely, which is something I've had a problem with Give Me Glow's formula in the past with their mattes. I'm pleased to see these shadows working really well together. And this is the same with the Vivid Rose palette. I've found that the matte formula works really well as a blush. The pan size is nice and big, so there's lots of room for a bigger brush in there. Plus the matte formula is not super ultra pigmented right off the bat, so you have time to build it up and blend it out, which is perfect for a blush, which is why a palette with this color story and this size might be really good to travel with because then you don't have to pack a separate blush. So far, lives up to the hype completely. Really, really happy with it. All right, I'm gonna head out and go meet my friend for a drink on a patio on a beautiful June day. So I'm gonna leave it here, but we have one more look to tackle with this palette, which is coming at you right Now, is it good or just sad that this is kind of growing on me? And we're back, look number two with the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Vintage Rose Palette. And today, we definitely want to play it up a little bit more, maybe have a bit more drama going on. As per usual, I've not solidified exactly what I wanna do. I know that I definitely want to tap into these two greens here, but apart from that, I have no thoughts. So I'll just throw caution to the wind as usual, play it by ear, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But definitely today feeling more of the drama. Let's just zoom you on in and get started. Also, that friend that I was meeting up with in the last look, we went on a very unexpected, impromptu, five kilometer walk for which I was not wearing the appropriate footwear. And I gotta tell you, my feet are pretty mangled. <laughs> They wrapped in all sorts of bandages today and um, it's been interesting. I really wanna use this green, but there's really nothing in this palette that will transition properly. I have a feeling if I start with Rust Rose and then if the deepest part of the crease is Velvet Petals, that green might work onto the lid. I think what I wanna do is start with the green and see if I can blend it out with Rust Rose. It's an interesting choice to throw a matte green into a palette without a transition shade, especially when the other shades in the palette are reds and pinks. And sometimes if you're blending red and green together, it can be a bit mud city. So we'll see what happens. But let's start this party off with aged rose stem. I'm gonna pack that on the outer and inner third. trying to angle the shape kind of outward this way. Well, it packed really nicely. These shadows are quite dense, if that makes any sense. Like there's not a whole lot of kick up in the pan. Like they don't feel like they're going to fly everywhere when you dip into them. And I'll try and blur those edges out as best as possible. Even just by itself, that's really pretty. It's a bit more muted on the lid. In the pan, it has a bit more vibrancy, at least to my eye, but it's neutralized a bit in here. I'm gonna see what happens if I try to blend it out with Rust Rose. If it goes poorly, we can always start again. But I'm curious, because I do love these two colors and I don't know how they're gonna react to each other, but I wanna see them together. So I'm just gonna take that on a small brush and start making little circles around the edge here. Here. Yeah, it's kind of getting muddy right in here and I thought that was gonna happen. Just for fun, I wanna see what happens if I try and use velvet petals. That's kind of working. Let's go back into aged rose stem. 
I honestly can't tell if I love this or I hate this, but it's interesting, so I'm gonna keep going. Let's put a shimmer on the lid and see what happens. Starting off with some NYX Glitter Primer. All right, time to dip into Thorn, which I am so excited for. I mean, this color fucking slaps, so. I'm gonna blend the edges with a little bit more aged rose stem. I think I'll just keep going for now, do the lower lash line and see if it comes together or if it falls apart. So let's start with velvet petals. And then let's use a little bit of aged rose stem in the center here. And then a bit more velvet petals just underneath there. This is getting into quite grungy territory, which may not be for everyone. That is okay. I'm blending it out with rust rose just to see what happens. Ooh, that is very grungy. And I actually kind of like it more now. And I think I'll definitely do something green in the waterline. Let's take Spare Time from the ColourPop and Raw Beauty Christie collection, because I think it's going to be a perfect match. Okay, I actually think this is in a good spot. There was a moment there where I definitely wanted to start again, but now I'm kind of back into it. Um, I think we're going to have to do some lashes and see how this looks with the rest of the face. I think I can pull this off. Let me go do that, throw on some lashes, and then we will come back and finish the rest of the look. All right, other side is done. Lashes are on. These are Alter Ego by Bold Face. A very dramatic pair of lashes, which I think is only fitting for this look. And actually, the more I wear it, the more I'm enjoying it. Moving on to some blush. I definitely want to try and incorporate Rust Rose into the blush, but I think I have to start with something a little bit lighter first. Why a blush is not immediately jumping to mind is wild to me. I feel like I should have a dusty rose blush. It sounds like something I would have, right? But I can't think of anything. So I'm just gonna pick up a couple of these in here to start off with. Okay, now I think I'm actually gonna layer up with a bit of Rust Rose from the palette. Now I'm just taking the brush that we were using for the eyes with the same eyeshadow on it. I'm going to just blend the blush and the eyeshadow together a little bit more on the outer edge here. I think I'm going to use a little bit of this as my glowy blush on the apples of the cheeks, but I think I'll tap only into the lighter side here, which is the honey side. This is the Melt Digital Dust Duo Blush in Raw Honey. Yeah, for highlight, I'm gonna go in with Molten Rose Gold from Maybelline. It's a classic, you really can't go wrong with this one. And then I think I'll just take that into the inner corner. And this begs the eternal question, what the fuck do you do with the lip? I bought something from Gimme Glow actually that I have yet to use and you know, it could work. I mean, it's not like a perfect match or anything and it's not like super dramatic in any sort of way, but it might look cute, let's try it. I'm gonna use the House Labs Rip Lip Liner in the shade Rule. All right, let's give this a try. This is the Give Me Glow Vivid Lip Paint in the shade Juicy Melon. I don't know, something about this color just made me want it, even though it's so basic, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's kind of like sheer and glossy, which I kind of love, and it smells exactly like a butterscotch pudding cup. If you've ever smelled one of those, that's what this smells like. It's cute. Does it go? Not really at all. Am I too lazy to change it into something more appropriate? Yeah, a little. I also think red would be a really good option, like a dark, dark red, but I don't have anything on me at the moment that would be like a perfect match. And I think if it were even just like a little bit off, it wouldn't work. The other option is to try and match the green and go with hazel, which would kind of be a move actually. Let's just give it a shot, cause why not? I've got it, we might as well. And you know what? I haven't done something like this in a while, so I think we'll leave it like that. All right, I think we're done. I think we're done. 
and I believe that that is the Two Looks One palette with the Vintage Rose palette all complete. It's really surreal to finally be playing with it after I've been pining after it for so long, but it definitely lives up to my expectations. I had no troubles blending any of the mattes. It is not a really dusty formula, so there's not a whole lot of mess in the pan, but there's still a good amount of pigment there. It's buildable and it's definitely not dry by any means. Again, I love the pan size that Give Me Glow uses. Generally, just a little larger than your average eyeshadow pan, which means that you can get bigger brushes in there, which means that the eyeshadows instantly become just a little bit more versatile than your average eyeshadow, especially with the tones that they choose. They choose these tones that are multifunctional. You can definitely get away with using both of these as blushes because they're not super pigmented right off the bat. Like you can really work with them and build them up and blend them out and they perform just as good as any blush. As per usual, Give Me Glow's shimmer formula is insane. It's a little bit overwhelming actually, just how ultra metallic and shiny they are. Like they really give you that foiled effect if you're going for it. And here I used one of them in a softer way. Instead of going in with my finger, I used a brush and it does give you a little bit of a softer shimmer moment. So it's nice to see their shimmer formula working in more than just one way. I think if I had any gripes about this palette, it would just be that this matte green in here is kind of just floating around in there and there's not a whole lot you can do with it unless you wanted to use it on its own and try and blend out the edges as best as possible, which I think is definitely doable. I could have gone in that direction today, but I did want to see if I used this as a transition shade, if it would get muddy. Turns out it does, but I think I was able to camouflage that a little bit with this dark burgundy shade here, Velvet Petals. That really came in the clutch here for the blend for sure. But would I say that this belongs in here? If you were restricting yourself to using only this palette, the green is just a little bit more difficult to use because it is a deeper tone. On a darker skin tone, that might not be much of a problem. But for me, I would prefer having something a little lighter to blend it out with. Of course, I have many options for that in my collection, so it's not like it's a huge problem for me. But if this was the only palette you owned and you were a skin tone very similar to mine, I would just say that this might be difficult to use on its own. I will say, however, throwing that green in there is aesthetically very pleasing to the eye. It really is evocative of a rose garden. It's got all of those tones in there. You can really just see the inspiration very, very clearly. So I understand why they put it in there. Anyway, I'm happy that I purchased this. I'm happy it's in my collection. I really wanna know your thoughts on this palette. It has been out for quite some time. So some of you might have already been playing with this for a while. So I'm really curious to know what you guys think. If you do have this one, do you pull it out often? What are your feelings on the color story? Or were you like me? Are the restocks just eluding you? Is this your white whale? Have you never been able to get your hands on it? All of your thoughts, please leave them down below in the comments. I mean, the demand is still pretty high for this palette. I don't think it's going anywhere. And if you have nothing like this in your collection, it is a banger. All right, I think it's that time, folks. So I'm gonna head out. But before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways you can help out my channel. You can give this video a huge thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement with this video is crucial to its success in the algorithm. So if you have a few spare seconds of your life, please engage with this video. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. If you wish to support me financially, I do have a Patreon. The link is down below in the description box, along with a bunch of petitions to sign and places to donate. All right, folks. And with that, please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask, stay home if you can, get vaccinated if you can. Just keep doing your best and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Oh my God, we haven't even done this yet. Who even am I anymore? All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Okay, this is being stupid. Ooh, ooh, that was good. Once we finally got there in the end, Jesus. Jesus.